I'm Elizabeth Blackburn. I'm a professor at the University of California, San Francisco. I'm actually the Morris Herstein Professor of Physiology and Biology in the Department of Biophysics and Biochemistry. How about that? <laughs> and, or maybe it's Biochemistry and Biophysics. Anyway, I grew up in Tasmania and I had a lot of opportunity to be outdoors and I loved animals and my mom told me that I would play with poisonous jellyfish and in Australia there are ants that sting you really badly and I would pick them up and cradle them in my hand and talk to them. So I just thought all living things were wonderful. When we think of life, we tend to think of what's what's a little bit more identifiably like us. You know, we think of us, of course, we think of, you know, mammals, pets and, you know, furry things. And then we, you know, think about fish and we think about plants and things. And yet there's an enormous universe of life, which we don't happen to see with the naked eye, but microscopes make, you know, abundantly clear. So I happen to be working with... Um, a very tiny single-celled organism and it actually lives in pond scum and it's called tetrahymena, very charming and it swims around in little corkscrew kind of tracks and um, has seven sexes by the way, exciting little life under the pond you know, <laughs> surface. So the point is though it has a lot of very tiny chromosomes and I decided to look at what's at the end of chromosomes because nobody knew what actually was there so what's at the very end of the chromosome is given the name the telomere and just means telo means end, you know, from the Greek and mere body. And we discovered um, an enzyme that was completely new at the time that adds extra DNA, it elongates those ends. So that solves a problem. How do chromosomes replicate and yet not lose DNA from their ends? Well, if you have something that just keeps adding back some extra. So that was really, you know, a huge fun to find this. And we found this in tetrahymena. Some people like to, you know, explore outer space and, you know, that's an unknown world. And yet there are these little tiny unknown worlds, which was this very simple, what's at the ends of chromosomes? The beautiful baobab tree, or tree of life, is an African icon. The baobab fruit contains four times the potassium of banana, three times the vitamin C of an orange, and twice the calcium of spinach. But the baobab is an orphan. Science has paid little attention to this tree until now. The African Orphan Crops Consortium is harnessing the power of genetics for orphan crops. The baobab tree is the first of 101 plants to have its genome sequenced, assembled, and annotated. And the information will be made available to all unrestricted. Where millions of people are malnourished, this genetic data will help farmers provide the food they need. The genomes will guide African plant breeders so they can create crops that are higher yielding, water and nutrient use efficient, resilient to climate change, and full of nutrition triggering a huge leap forward for the diversity and sustainability of the continent's agriculture.